Is your, are your lips tingling yet? No. <laughs> okay, I started to told they tingle that often, so maybe before. Maybe, oh, maybe, 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 maybe they had the old solution. Yeah, now solution. I started recording like a sense. Yes. Which is the height now we how okay. is it that you can't stay off your phone? <laughs> Popular. Okay, guys, so the way this test works, I'll explain it to Daniel so he knows, but if you all want to listen. So, as you saw on that uh, graph, so the workload is just going to get progressively more difficult. It'll last anywhere between 6 and 12 minutes, depends on the individual. But it's going to start at 50 watts, so that's the resistance on the bike. So it's pretty much a built-in warm-up, and it'll be like that for 2 minutes. So it's a nice, comfortable pace, will allow him to start to warm up, move his muscles and everything for 2 minutes. And then after that, the workload is going to go up by one watt every two seconds, okay? So it's going to be very gradual. He's not going to feel it at first, but eventually it'll start getting more difficult, and that's when he'll need us all to cheer him on. I'll be able to point out um, the values we're getting on the graphs, what everything means. Um, and Daniel's job is just to watch the RPM here. So you want to make sure your RPM is always above 50. It depends on the person, but people usually get a comfortable pace around 70 to 90 RPM. It's up to you, but make sure they're above 50, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. So let me know when you're ready. Better um, not embarrass us. <laughs> you're a top athlete. Okay, so you can start cycling whatever you're ready. Okay. So I started the test, so there's 50 watts resistance on there. So you can watch on this computer here. So this is the time of the test. So at the two minute mark is when it'll go up. This is his RPM, or his revolution per minute. And this is the low of the resistance on the bike. No, so the thing about this test at the end, if he you know, wants to just give a little bit more, he can come off the seat. But for the Wingate test, your bum has to be on the seat at all times. Oh, you not for the wing gate, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> Heart rate is not being recorded there, being measured on this one, yeah. Does he have a monitor on? He's right on the big one. Yeah, the chest one. Yeah. The heart rate monitor, so this is a monitor basically, so he's measure, it's monitoring his heart rate and it goes through a wireless signal and we're able to pick it up on the computer. It's actually this right here that's detecting his heart rate from the strap he's wearing. And then we get the values on the computer. They're pretty expensive, but a lot of fitness enthusiasts like to have them so they can know what training zone they're in or what heart rate they're using. Okay, so it's a minute and 15 seconds in, so still warming up. Woo! Go, Daniel! Yep, be, be supportive. <laughs> That's right. I wouldn't even be able to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like pacing yourself like requires using your nose. Hold this. Okay, so we're over the two minute mark, so the resistance going up. Look at that Is he supposed to just try and keep this pace? Um, yeah, whatever's comfortable for him, so as long as they're above 50 RPMs. Five minutes. 50 RPMs. Is there like a record for this? Like, okay. someone who stood in for the longest amount of time? Someone who... Yeah, that, that who skier at the top longest of the amount of time. Yeah, and so... The skier was at like 90 or something at the top of the trip. Right, so the time of the VO2 max test, or how long it takes, doesn't necessarily mean anything. Two people could both be eight minutes, and someone has a VO2 of 50, and someone has a VO2 of 40. Like, it, it doesn't, you just kind of give that to the participants, so they know what to expect. Um, so it's really individual, but the highest VO2 I've seen um, was 72. Um, when 50 is the 90 percentile, you, you know, you're shot. ridiculous. Five, and that was a cross-country athlete at the match. Yeah. Well, you're only at 20. To do. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then if you guys want to look at these graphs here, so this one over here is VO2, so the amount of oxygen he's taking in. So basically this system here is a metabolic cart that's able to analyze the oxygen to give us that value. So when I said 50 was the score, basically we're going to see that throughout. Yep. What's that? 
right here. Yeah. So that's when we're just trying to get a stable reading at first. That was probably when he was may, might have been a little nervous. He's breathing in more uh, before the test started. Okay. Often, what happens is before the test starts, you're a little nervous, so your VO2 or the amount of oxygen you're taking in can be higher than what's typically resting. And then once you start exercising, you can see a little divot as well, because you're kind of getting used to it. You're not nervous anymore, and it's more just like a hyperventilating thing as to why you're, um, even though you don't think you're nervous, just subconsciously your little heart rate's higher, things like that. And the same often ha happens with heart rate. So before oh, the test starts, it can be high if you're a little nervous. But then once the test goes, it, it drops down. But then we'll start to climb up for a little more exercise. So his heart rate signals coming in and out a bit, but that's the blue line. So ignore these drops here. Um, that's just lost signals. But it's going up, and I think we got the signal now, so it's okay. Do you guys know how to determine your maximal predicted heart rate? Oh, is there this? Yeah, that's right. What's something minus something. something. Good job. Good job, bro. <laughs> I know what baby's heartbeat is from 1690. Like so no. no, I'm hearing stroke volume cardiac go, but a little different. You can use those to determine VO2. Um, but just heart rate. Has to do with age. Does that ring a bell? Oh, no, it's a yeah, it's a little, isn't it? Is no, but you're getting there. So it's 220 minus your age. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, no. We did some bio. 120 minus your age, yeah, bad. Close. So 220 minus your age, and that will give you your max predicted heart rate based off of age, essentially. So it's dependent uh, for age for all individuals. So for you guys, your predicted heart rate uh, maximum would be around 2 to a 4. I don't know how old you are, 2 to a 3. Yeah, so just over 200. So we're able to see, so say he was to give up right now and say, I'm at my VO2 max. I'd be like, okay, well, let's look at your heart rate. Your heart rate's only, you know, like 150, so maybe you weren't really at your maximum. So it kind of gives us another indication to see that, yeah, that he really was at his maximum. If he's, you know, we would expect his heart rate to get to around 200, but there's a lot of variability within each person. It's usually plus or minus 10 beats. I'm gonna do a little, so I'm gonna someone, do a little your age max heart rate could be 213, or it could be 193. Question. I see those two, the numbers going in. So is the one on the bottom one he's not breathing out? Um, one is the oxygen analyzer and one is the CO2 analyzer. This is a percent, so it's just in room air and things like that as well. Oh, it's not necessarily. It's not what he's doing. Right, so there it goes through a whole series of calculations to come up with the values. So his scores right now, he's around a 30 of VO2, where 50 was that high or 90th percentile. So we've seen it, it started around you know, five, and it's gone up to around 30 right now. And he's still got lots left. He's doing awesome. I'd be passing out. <laughs> so he's at 175 watts. How are you feeling? You good? Okay. I wouldn't be able to. So you can see his volume of oxygen that he's taking in is going up, and that's because what demand would be going up in his body? ATP. That's right. So the ATP demand's going up. He needs to take in more oxygen. We're able to see that. And then his heart rate's climbing as well, but ignore that dip there. Yeah, what's that dip? That was, that signal was lost. Oh, it wasn't his heart rate. <laughs> Where's that dip? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, stop voting for a That's right. <laughs> Good job, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Two Daniels. <laughs> Not that one. All right, he's at 200 watts. <laughs> You're doing so much. 200 watts, that's awesome. Woo! Yeah, woo! Yeah. Woo! Oh, about seven minutes in. Oh my god. I went by fast. How many watts yeah, is it going? Not for him. <laughs> why, why is it that the protocol is one watt every two, per seconds. two seconds? Every protocol is different. Sometimes there's step protocols, so it could just right. be like 50 watts for three minutes, and 100 watts for three minutes, kind of like that. We find a ramp protocol is really better, so it just gives you more information than just these level ones. And also, you're not getting that epoch. Yeah, there's a lot of factors behind it, that's one, but basically it's a lot easier to just do a ramp protocol, and this is one that's been designed and validated. We can do it on the treadmill, and there's like different protocols too that you can use, it's like you can just keep increasing the incline, or you can increase the speed, or you can like lots it. Pretty much there's a ton of different protocols, and there's no real like best method. Is, is the one oxygen well, ratio kind of for ease of Yes, so if you are to one, that's right, and you want it to be something that they'll finish between 6 or 8 and 12 Kind of thing. And if it was one watt every every two seconds, or every second, it would this has to be done too soon, and it wouldn't give us a real indication. That we have. So it's kind of making it so that they'll finish in that range. Um, yeah. All right, so his VO2 is around 45. He's doing awesome. 
Almost at that 50 mark, which is great. Heart rate is around 195, so he's working hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go. Okay. Bye, Good job, Daniel. We got 250 watts. Keep Wait, going. Wait, I got shoes undone. No, it's fine. <laughs> Good job, Daniel. Okay. Just warm up for a second. But, and that was for people 20 to 29. So imagine in four years what his VO2 would be like. Wow. Keep growing, right? So, wow. I want to see 80. Good job. <laughs> Just keep going, keep going. You can do it. His heart rate's around 200, so he may oh have God. that higher than he is. Yeah! Wow. Oh, breathe. That looks really Wait, that's all he got? What do you get? 55? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Awesome. That's it. So his heart rate got to 202, which oh is essentially God. his yeah. max predicted heart rate. So we would like to think, yeah, that probably was his VO2 max. He didn't give up too easy or anything. Could've and his, his VO2 was 55. <laughs> wow. Woo! Yeah. If you were like on, a, on like an oxygen tank, like pure oxygen, would you be able to take it more? Yeah. There's a lot of um, there's, yeah, you can manipulate the, yeah. the air you're breathing in to make it easier. If you make oxygen like, so delivery to you so easier, should I stop it? I think it's done. <laughs>